Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, we're coming back for another exciting evening of programming. Um, I apologize to those of you who have been having issues with the compiler. Um, I've posted an update in our, uh, re our subreddit about this and uh, I've also added a video tutorial about this as well. Um, I've offered alternatives for you guys to try in terms of uh, IDEs and compilers, but uh, I really don't have experience with anything outside of this bloodshed and uh, Visual Studio, so I won't be very much help if you want to set up code blocks or Eclipse or anything of that nature. Okay, with that said, um, you'll notice that I have kind of a uh, set up a bit of a skeleton of a program here. Um, I haven't even changed the name of this yet. But we're going to be talking this time around about uh, a very different kind of... Um, well, actually, it's not something that, that we haven't talked about before. It's something that I didn't really touch on for as long as I should have. Um, we're going to be talking about something very important, and what that's going to be is known as return types. Um, return types are these little things that uh, you'll see in our prototype. In this case, it's a double. Um, that means that whatever value we want to have sent back to main at the end of this uh, little thing's execution, we can do. Um, example, let's assume that I wanted to just make this do A plus B, and whatever gets sent in A and B, I want that return to the program. So let's say uh, int C equals A plus B, or something along those lines. And I would just simply type return C. And that's a completely valid statement. And the reason it's invalid here is because I haven't uh, actually defined what A and B are in this scope yet. Um, and we can use that to set variables, we can use that to output things, and I'm going to show you an example of each of those things. Um, so as you can see, we have, uh, instead of x and y, I've decided to finally, you know, keep to my word and start using more descriptive variable names. Uh, we have first number and second number and product. All of these are initialized to zero. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call prod sum, which is just a, you can name this whatever you really, whatever you want. Let's call this um, product set, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting uh, our variable product with it. So we renamed it product set, and it's going to take in two doubles. You can see that there or here. And once they're in, they're going to be called A and B. So what we're going to do is we're going to type product um, equals product set and we're going to do first number oops, second number number delicious. Alright, and so then we're just going to see out product Okay, and that should be a, a pretty simple build here. Um, so it's going to... Oh, actually, I'd, look at me trying to, uh, to run this before I actually told it what to do. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it return the product. Um, you saw me just try to get a little bit ahead of myself, which is uh, not entirely uncommon with me. So, when it passes first number, in this case, first number is going to go into double A. So, it's just a double, and it's named A. Um, we can name it first number, if you want. Um, the reason why I wouldn't name it first number is because then, if I'm ever doing a search for code, and I search for first number, and say I want to do a replace, then it's going to replace all the instances of first number even when they're outside of the scope of main. So that can cause problems or it 
can solve some. Um, typically, you just don't want to do that. Um, you want to have unique variables. So let's just call it first number prod. And we'll call this one a second number prod. And so we're going to take first number prod, um, or well, we're going to declare double. Um, we're going to call this product set. Um, actually, let's not because that's the name of the function itself. Let's just call it prod set and make it equal to first number prod multiplied by second number prod. So in this case, all we're really doing is we're taking first number and multiplying it by second number. Um, we've changed the variable names just within this scope. Um, and I'm going to show you something else that's kind of important. Uh, and then we're going to add an end all there. And then we're going to do a C out second number and another end L. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take first number prod. I'm going to set it to plus equals 10. And then I'm going to take second number prod. And I'm going to set it to minus equals 2. Um, so whatever the values are, first number is going to have be 10 greater, and second number is going to be 2 less. Um, after that, we are going to return prod set. And so what that means is it's going to take the value of prod set, and, and see how these parentheses are here? that whatever that number is, is going to be returned right here. Uh, so instead of this, it's going to be whatever number this comes out to be in prod set. Um, let me just run it. And I want to ask you guys something before I continue. You can kind of pause this, make your predictions. But you'll notice that um, we're passing first number, and it's going into the first number prod variable. And second number is going into the second number prod variable. So whatever numbers are stored in these variables are going to be piped along. Now, when I edit them like this, what do you think is going to print out in these two statements? Take a minute and think about it. Um, when you're ready, just unpause the video, and I'm sure you'll get your answer. All right, so here we go. I'm going to compile this. And our first number, um, I'm just going to use 2 because it's going to turn into 12. And uh, let's do 6, because it's going to turn into 4. We should be expecting the product to be uh, 48. So, OK. In this case, you're going to notice that, it, that these two numbers, they stayed 2 and 6. And let me explain you why that is. Uh, the 48 came back exactly as we expected. So that means that this was indeed 12, and this was indeed 4. And I'm about to teach you guys something very important. When we're dealing with just variables being sent like this, it's known as pass by value. Um, pass by value is going to be a, uh, a method of sending information to a uh, function where all we're doing is we're sending the number that's contained within a variable and not the variable itself. So what it does is it asks the memory space um, where first number, in this case, resides, what do you have in that memory space? And, you know, it replies with a number. And so then this function takes that number rather than the variable itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what if I want to send the variable, and what if I want to use uh, a variable exactly as it is, and I want it to go through uh, a sort of uh, a sort of setting within uh, a function? And I'll show you guys how to do that now. 
that's known as passing by reference and I'm going to make a uh, a different one for this and I'm going to leave that commented out so you guys can kind of play with that um, and I'm just going to comment out everything that had to do with that so again you guys can uncomment that and kind of toy around with that in the source code link down below um, I'm going to whip up a real quick uh, two prototypes. We're going to have, um, hmm, you know what, we're going to do a void, and we're going to call it, um, pass by value, which is what we just did here, and we're going to make it take two doubles, and we're going to do another void, and call it pass by ref. And that also is going to take in two doubles. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're still taking in first and second number. So what we're going to do is we're going to call... Um, hmm. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to call pass by value. And we're just going to send in first number, comma, second. I always capitalize the second thing I'm typing in any of these. It's a terrible habit. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with pass by ref. And these are going to be almost exactly the same things. We're going to have them do quite literally exactly the same thing. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, void. Um, no, we're going to output these in between. Oh, well, I already have them, so let's do that and just uncomment them. Just going to indent them just a touch so we know that it's kind of corresponding with that code. Um, just because we kind of want to see what it's doing to our stuff. Okay, so. I'm sorry, I'm a real stickler for alignment. Uh, okay, so we're going to do void, and uh, our first one was pass by value, and we're going to just call it double uh, first double second in relation to first and second number. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say first plus equals 25 and second plus equals 50. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. It's a void, so we don't need to actually return anything. Now we're going to do the exact same code for pass by ref. Now, what you should be expecting, since we're going to be passing by reference, is that it's going to come back with a different value. And if that's what you guessed, you're actually wrong, because I didn't add one key feature to it. So we're going to do 2 and 10. It comes back as 2 and 10 twice. So what you actually need to do to pass by reference is you're going to add a little ampersand. And that's all you're going to add. And you're going to come down here and you're going to add it. I believe it's right there before the variable. Although it has been a little while since I've uh, passed something by reference other than an array. So okay, we're going to try this again. We're going to try 2 and 10. And there you go. We didn't actually output anything with either of these. All we've done is the same exact code, and you'll see that it stays 2 and 10 in the pass by value. But when you pass by reference, it's clearly changed. So with that said, that's the importance of defining return types and knowing the difference of passing by value and passing by reference. My name's Damien. I hope that you guys got something out of this video, and I'll see you next time.